My second point is, you know, it is true that babies do sin from birth. So they, they, they are born sinners and they do sin. Uh, let's have a look, look at a couple of verses there. Psalm 58. Verse 3. says here, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. So I don't think this verse is just talking about you know, reprobates. I think you know, sinners are, are wicked people and we all have that wicked side of us. And it's saying here because we're born with the nature of Adam's sin, you know, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking, um, speaking lies. So I do believe that it's true that babies do sin. So I don't believe that the right position either is that babies are sinless. Because those of us that have children, we know that they're not sinless. You know, it doesn't take long for even a newborn to be lying to you, to to be, you know, they're born selfish. They only think about themselves. You know, they, they, they know how to be rebellious. I mean, even the children that are my age, they know how to lie and deceive. And, you know, like, they, you know, you catch them in something and they'll now lie to you to cover, cover themselves so they don't get in trouble. So it is true that babies sin. No, nobody's saying, so it's, it'd be wrong to say that babies are sinless. And, you know, the world tries to teach this philosophy that, Man is inherently good, in need of direction. But we know from the Bible that that's not the case, that man is inherently sinful and in need of correction. And the reason why I just make this point quickly is you have to be really careful out there with parenting philosophies. You know, when, when you have children and you know, you're, you're Googling and you're trying to figure out what's the best way to do things, just make sure you always check it back with the Word of God. Because generally there are those two uh, philosophies out there when you look at any parenting method there are the parenting methods that believe that children are inherently good and you're trying to just to bring that good out of them and direct them into a certain way and then there's obviously our philosophy on parenting that children are sinful and they need to be disciplined they need to be corrected they need to be changed because if you just allow them to be who they are they're gonna be a sinner they're gonna be foolish and the rod of correction needs to drive that foolishness from them so no, children are not inherently good. People are not inherently good and just need to be directed a certain way. Uh, people are inherently bad and need correction. So just be aware of those when you're researching different parenting methods and parenting philosophies. <clears throat> One of them, I'll just give you an example because um, it, we sort of do it in a way. Um, where, uh, you know, when you're trying to wean your child off, or from, from milk and wean them onto food. And, you know, th there's this philosophy out there that is um, called baby-led weaning, which is basically you allow the child to just experiment and just eat what they want. And, you know, if they don't want to eat something, you don't give it to them. If they want to eat something, you give it to them. So whilst I do, I do agree, and we do in our, play, in our, in our house, we do just let the children determine when they want to start eating solids. The difference is we don't let the child decide what solids they're going to eat. So you see how we, we take a philosophy that's out there, this baby-led weaning, and whilst I do understand that it's natural for a child once, they start, once they're ready for food to start reaching for food, but I know that a child is only going to eat what they want to eat and not what they need to eat. So as a parent, knowing that a child is just going to do what they want, I need to force them to eat what they don't want to eat so that they're not a picky eater. And if I force them to eat what they don't want to eat, they will eventually like it. And, it, and we've seen that in our own family. Because, you know, we eat, uh, you guys know we eat sauerkraut, which is like a fermented cabbage. It's really sad. I mean, most kids, when they first eat it, it's like eating a lemon, right? They're like, oh, like, what is it? But we just keep, keep giving it to them. If they don't like it, it's like, no, you have to eat it. And we force them to eat it. And now they love it. Now they, they eat like cups and cupsfuls of it. So, you know, don't, uh, you know, you just be wary of your children, you know, eat and don't eat things. If you force them to eat it at a young age, they will grow up liking it because they'll get that acquired taste. And we've even found in our own family, they didn't like it. And then there was a period where like, they, they really would go against eating it and you'd still just have to force it a little bit. And then all of a sudden they're, they're fine eating it. And it just doesn't even work. So I don't know where that switch takes place in their head. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's like that. And that's why our kids are, are generally not very fussy with what they eat. They just eat whatever because we force them to eat it. And if they don't eat it, they get spanked. And there's that sort of process of correction. And then one day, um, the fruit of your labor, 
all of a sudden uh, comes out and you're not sure when that, when that switch took place.